Greetings sailors and welcome to, or welcome back to, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought. It's been a while since I've looked at this on the channel and indeed there's been some fairly major changes since the last time I looked at this in that it now has a campaign, it's now on Steam and we're into the 1.x versions of the game and it's quite a bit more polished than it was previously although it is still very much a work in progress. There's still lots of indeed work in progress tags on various features. Now previously when I've played this it's basically just been having a go in the Naval Academy scenarios which are fun enough in their own right. Uh, just as before you've got the ability to do your own uh, custom battles. You can just basically have a quick bash around and if you so desire you can design each and every ship in the game or you can just basically let the game auto design everything but the campaign the campaign is the new thing or the big feature that the campaign is really what this game was always meant to be about as designing and commanding your own navy and also managing some of the financial and technological side of things as well now I'm not fully 100% sure how it works in terms of unlocking stuff because I still only have the 1890 start year for, for Britain but for Germany I've gotten as far now as 1920 and so I'm going to give that a go and I'm actually going to turn the difficulty up a bit because I've been finding the normal difficulty to be honest quite easy I mean it, well, I'll show you how it works but it's essentially uh, accumulates victory points by sinking enemy ships, striking enemy ports, sinking enemy transports. It's it's not the most complicated thing in the world, but it's also rather a limited campaign map for now in that we're just, uh, well, at least with um, Britain and Germany, you're just basically dealing with the North Sea and the seas around Britain. I think the Mediterranean is also an option once you get to uh, obviously playing nations like Italy and France and uh, the, the Aust Austro-Hungarians, I, I think Russia as well. I don't, uh, I don't know if if, uh, if there's a Far East region in the uh, in the game yet in terms of um, being able to actually have a campaign with uh, Russia and China uh, as naval powers. But uh, yeah, and Japan as well, obviously. But but for now, I seem to be just stuck with this uh, North Sea region, and uh, yeah. Here we are. Now, this is the uh, pre-campaign map because I want to... Uh, oh no, I, I took the auto designs. I was going to do my own designs, but let's have a look at what the auto design has given us then. Yeah, I was going to do my own designs fully off the bat, but it's auto designed and, and given us a fleet to work with. Uh, which is not how I've done it previously, but you know, we can consider that part of the challenge, I suppose. So what have we actually got? Uh, in fact, we can see what we've got here. Uh, nine battleships, four battle cruisers, fifteen heavy cruisers, twenty light cruisers, fifteen destroyers. We seem to be beyond the era of the torpedo boat at this point. I don't know if that template will still be available. I also don't know how much this follows on from the previous campaigns because I've obviously beaten Britain and taken their ships as reparations and whatnot uh, in the uh, the previous levels of campaign. So I don't know if this is supposed to be just like a series of. Uh, like each of these represents a series of campaigns and I have to beat the campaign series in order to be able to unlock um, Britain at different tech levels and uh, other nations. Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, we have our fleet a bit spread out, mostly in the western ports, which is fine. You don't tend to get much action happening in the Baltic, I've found. And let's also look at what ships we have. So if I look at... Uh, if I click on new design we can actually have a look see what we've got so uh, 26 knot light cruisers uh, they seem like okay they've got decent bulkheads and the rest but thin armor it's only a light cruiser after all uh, we do have torpedoes can we see where those are mounted don't know if I can see where the Lord. Oh wait, there we go. We moused over something there that showed them up. Uh, no, I don't know what I moused over there that showed up the uh, the torpedoes, but uh, yeah, there's 
probably some way of... Oh no, there we go. It's in the weapons section. So we've got 6 inch, a lot of 6 inch guns. 10 kilometer range, 3 inch guns, and full spread torpedo tubes. There's no uh, deck mounted torp tubes for cruisers or battleships or battle cruisers at this stage of the game. So, okay, that seems okay. That's not how I would have designed it, but sure. Our battleships are, let's see, packing 15 inch guns, pretty reasonable. My previous campaign I was using 12 inch guns, battle cruisers as my main ship. I have seen people do campaigns <laughs> and you can do this. I, I think it's probably more viable with, with bigger gun things like battleships and battle cruisers, but just all one ship type. I think I specifically watched somebody do a battle cruiser only campaign, which uh, yeah. Only a 9 inch belt though, 21 knot speed. Um, the protection isn't particularly good. The armament's good, but the protection is not great. Battle cruisers. We have uh, eight 13 inch barrels, decent secondaries. That's actually got some fore and aft torp tubes. Uh, the belt, also not good. Speed's decent though. But it doesn't have a great range either. Although we're only operating in the North Sea. We're not trying to command a worldwide empire here. So that doesn't really matter. Heavy cruisers. Uh, that's about what I ex would expect for a heavy cruiser in terms of armour. 7 inch guns. No torpedoes. And 26 knots. And then... Oh, what else have we got? Our... Uh, Destroyers, which apparently are an invalid design, but that's what the game is auto designed, so I don't know what to tell you. It's quite a big destroyer hull, actually. That's nearly 2,000 tons. 20, 29 knots! Ah! Okay, I actually had faster destroyers than that last time round, but they also had rather uh, fewer torpedoes. This is uh, quite a lot, actually. 9.5 kilometers. Uh, we have two quads. Looks like three quads? No, one quad, two triples, three triples. But one of them may not function correctly. So I don't know about that. That's the first time I've seen an auto-generated design with an invalid part, and I can't edit that. There is the refit option, but I've never actually... I'm not sure if that's just an unimplemented feature at the moment, or if that requires... Uh, certain technologies to get unlocked, so that certain sort of gateway technologies from the research screen. And honestly, most of the campaigns I've played thus far have been quick enough that uh, techs haven't even really been that big of a thing. But some of these are sort of fairly close to to com uh, completion. So um, yeah, we can see we're right down there. We've got the option. Will, will, will be the next thing will be unlocking fifteen thousand ton cruiser hulls, but that's not that big of a thing. Uh, that's crop for armor, which we can we can actually uh, put more resources into. But that comes if you look at the other things where it gives um, uh, a timer for it. It actually increases. So by putting more resources into one place with your priorities, you're making other things take longer. And also this is what I'm talking about with some things explicitly marked with uh, work in progress tags and just not implemented in the game yet. And you even see that in some of the technologies where uh, it will say, you know, oh this will decrease the construction time and then in brackets work in progress. <laughs> so not actually implemented yet. Uh, we'll also put that into, let's put one into engines as well which actually then increases the time to, to uh, uh, research the armor quality but that's fine. Finances, that tells me our total pool of funds, our monthly increase or decrease as the case may be in, uh, uh, in funds and also our increase or decrease in our uh, crew. So what we can do is maybe bump up the tech budget a bit, which is kind of expensive, but that should, uh, yeah, that's taken us from, what was it, 16 months to 11 months. Um, 
Oh, that was the world page. That's fine. We don't want that just yet. And maybe increase crew training by like 5%. Because uh, anytime you lose crew, it comes out of your crew pool. If you need to build a new crew, it comes out of your crew pool. And I think if you uh, if you increase it enough, does it go up from? Uh, it still says average training cadets. I'm not sure what affects the training level because when you're just in a scenario, um, you can on a per ship basis indicate what you want the crew training level to be. And obviously, higher train crews cost more money. But I don't know what affects that in the, uh, the campaign mode exactly. There doesn't seem to be individual ship experience as a thing. You don't have individual ships getting more experienced crews from fighting many engagements. From what I have experienced, I could be wrong about that. I could maybe just have not had enough uh, ships, uh, you know, having <laughs> had enough experience for it to actually then show up as going up a training level. But uh, yeah. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, we're doing all right overall, and maybe we'll design some more battle cruisers and uh, maybe a new class of destroyers as well, because I'm not convinced that class of destroyers is going to work as advertised. So let's go with the battle cruiser two hull. The ship designer hasn't changed that much. Uh, there are some changes coming with the 1.05 version, which is available in the beta testing branch at the moment but uh, I've, I've chosen just to stick with the live version that will let you do things like uh, actually select the the beam of your ship and I think the um, uh, the height of the uh, above the, the the waterline I can't remember what the name of that is now the uh, the draft do I mean the draft I think it I think I mean the draft but I'm not hundred percent sure so let's see if we can get a 30 knot battle cruiser. Uh, we can probably drop that down to there. So let's see what's available. More than last time. Uh, if you see me on Twitter, you'll know I've been doing some fairly funky designs. <laughs> so we might continue with that trend of doing silly, funky looking things. Um, yeah, I've either been doing all forward superstructure or all rear superstructure designs. <laughs> which uh, can look quite distinctive. We'll go with... Uh, we'll actually go with uh, uh, as far forward as we can with the main superstructure and we'll leave we'll leave that there. Uh, that was actually... Yeah, that's a weird quirk. Sometimes if you put stuff at the back like that it will be turned around even though you can flip stuff around but you can't normally do that with a superstructure but for some reason it will do that uh, by itself occasionally. Now that's overlapping slightly so let's pull that back a little so it looks slightly less jank. And we do have a spot for a turret uh, uh, there, and we also have a spot for a funnel. And as you see down here, engines, engine efficiency. So uh, at the moment, we just have basic engine options, so that's only showing us 13%. If I want to put the belt up to, say, a more reasonable 14, does that affect my uh, KHP per ton? Or whatever that is. Kilo horsepower, I guess that would be. Uh, but if we go to, let's see, uh, obviously fuel options have an effect, so uh, those also have an effect on cost, but you're not constrained by cost as you are in the scenarios. So let us go with uh, induced, forced, Bounced gives us 51, and then if we go to uh, gas turbines, most expensive, but they're also going to weigh the least. Engines 50, efficiency 51, so we'll need some bigger one than that. 54. Uh, that's way up, that's shot up to. Oh, well, that's because that is. Uh... So let's see if we can go tall funnel and then. Uh, induced. Well, that actually has reduced smoke interference, but it also increases the. Although funnel weight 22 versus 20, I think. Let's go with balanced for now. We can always move that down. This isn't the wackiest design, by the way. I had one of my previous ones where, and I don't think I can do it on this hull, but 
I actually have the tunnel, uh, the funnel behind the superstructure. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've not been doing pretty ships. I've been doing uh, interesting ships. Yeah, 1920s. I think we're probably going to go with either 14 or 15 inch guns. We can actually look at the individual characteristics. Um, 14 inch guns overall will have better accuracy, better rate of fire. And actually better range, and I don't know... Ah, see, that's the Mark III of a 14-inch gun. That's only a Mark I 15-inch gun. So that's a more mature design. Which is why it actually has better range. Uh, that's also only the Mark I. So maybe we'll go with 14-inch guns, and we'll maybe go with 14-inch doubles. That's not going to fit on there, but we can put on... Uh, Maybe a secondary on that platform, or even do I just go for a different rear tower that will weigh a bit less? Yeah, that's a good 200 tons less without the barbet, and it's not that much worse. So that's that's fine. Let's have that. Uh, we might even be able to squeeze a barbet in there and have. There's probably somebody somewhere that's watching this and screaming into their cornflakes. Uh, I guess we have to have one of those. Lord help me if Drakinafel ever watches any of these. Because uh, oh. I know there were some uh, fairly important design considerations as to where funnels went and where superstructure went and all that. But you know, if the game is going to let me do silly things like this, then I am going to do the silly things. I'm just saying, I'm gonna. You give me the ability to do silly things, then, uh, yeah, you know, you've you've seen me play, some of you anyway, uh, Kerbal Space Program. So, you know, this is the same impulse that led me to make the space tog. Right, well, I think we can get ten guns in there. The question is, can I? It doesn't always let you put barbets where you think. You can put barbettes. It's quite restrictive for some reason. That's the rotate feature there, as you can see. Uh, so medium superimposed barbette. So yeah, oh, that's too close. It kind of resets every time, and the unfortunate thing with rotating is only if you're doing something that's. Um, uh, in symmetry mode, like a secondary gun, uh, let's say if you wrote, oh, that's not going to fit apparently, but let's go with that then, just to demonstrate. So if, if I want that to be like that, uh, no, that's not rotated, that's not really showing off what I'm trying to show off. Yeah, you have to rotate each one individually. I don't know if that gets changed in 1.05, but yeah, that's a slightly annoying little interface thing at the moment. Uh, yeah, so behold my beautiful battle cruiser. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. So we have to do the rest of the things now. Let's stick on some five inch uh, casemate secondaries, and we can also indeed stick on. Uh, although we have a four weight offset at this point, but we can tinker with the armor and such like. Yeah, so what we've got basically is an 8-inch primary gun and a bunch of 14-inch secondaries. Uh, yep, that's exactly what's going on with this design. Uh, oh, we do have deck torpedo tubes. Nice. Okay, so uh, potentially I could put some light torpedoes at the aft here as well. And that would help uh, Get some of that. Now, is that going to add? Yeah, that does add to the full weight offset. So, yeah, if I maybe put on some like triples. Fortunately, it doesn't seem to be particularly catastrophic if uh, torp tubes get hit by. Uh, 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 you know, they just get disabled. They don't seem to explode violently. Right, now we have to actually do all the rest. So, uh, we want, uh, do we want an unbalanced? Yeah, let's actually go with an unbalanced rudder, hydraulic. 
Orcs one, double, uh, yeah. anti top one, all or nothing armor is now available, anti flood one, we'll leave bulk heads as standard, Harvey armor, we'll put that up to crop three, that saves a fair bit of weight, and let's go for a heavy barbette or standard barbette? We'll go for standard bar, uh, heavy barbette now, and then we can put that down to standard uh, if that's going to be uh, an issue. Tube powder, TNT three. Uh, do we want? Let's go with the one that weighs less. A coincidence range finder actually it gives better long range oh no it's the gun base accuracy it's the ring one that oh yeah we just don't have uh stereoscopic four at the moment we've only got coincidence four okay let's go with that hydro one uh radio direction finder now that's not a thing you really need to use in the scenario so we'll give that a go uh we also what is the torpedoes is that but yeah we want to have better reloading so semi-auto uh, is going to give us 41.6 second reload that is vaguely acceptable we could also have uh, lighter shells which would also give us a better reload I think yeah 7.5 and actually slightly better accuracy uh, but it does impact your your damage a bit but it also has the benefit of potentially reducing your uh, fire chances so you know what let's go with that uh, unless the enemy fleet is uh, uh, sporting lots of heavily armed behemoths I don't think we'll have that much of an issue so we'll put the conning tower up to let's say 16 inches and then got a little bit of weight left to play with let's have at least 12 inches on the turrets um, doesn't need to be quite that heavy for an 8 inch gun I don't think that actually we should reduce the full weight offset a little bit uh, right we want to I'll just increase the aft belt and the aft deck it's kind of the cheesy way of doing it but at the moment uh, yeah, sometimes trying to actually get stuff balanced is kind of uh, slightly tricky because if you have an unbalanced ship it uh, induces accuracy penalties that you don't especially want. I think that might be about as good as we're going to get it. Yeah, okay. Right, uh, that has given us a tiny bit extra. Can we maybe squeeze some extra thing on here? Better bulkheads. Uh, Bobbit four, no. Ox two, probably. Oh no, there we go. Ox two. Actually gives uh, better torret traverse and roger shift speed as well as turning rate and such like. Okay. Don't think we're going to get much else on it though. But uh, yeah. I might squeeze on an extra fraction of belt armor well, that wasn't even belt armor 14.1 there we go 14.1 inch belt and uh, it's it's beautiful it's beautiful you guys I don't know what you're talking about it's beautiful Wargaming please hire me to design your new ships yeah so we'll save that and then uh, can I just click yes let's have a go at making I think a less expensive destroyer what's the least we can do 1500 ton destroyer let's try for a, a, a 35 knot destroyer uh, we're gonna make, make it all about speed maybe not necessarily a hugely heavy torpedo armament um, 45 versus 47 tons. I can actually set the superstructure quite far back. <laughs> I mean, we could. Okay. We could put the superstructure there. And. 
that does have a gun mounting space in it. That feels, um, even for me that's maybe a little silly, but how about there? Very laid back destroyer. So, torpedo launchers, let's go with some, uh, some triples maybe? And then set those right at the back and that offsets things a bit. Uh, we're going to want 20 inch standard torque prop. That's a number of, we can go with fast torpedo propulsion, but we won't bother with that. Uh, we could also have increased uh, torps, but that's probably not going to be worth it for, for most engagements. Turbines. We also do need a funnel, which has to be stuck uh, somewhere. Oh, that's actually putting the aft weight offset quite badly back there. Can you not put the funnel on that upper bit of deck? Oh. Right, how about we shift that there and maybe have, oh, have the funnel on the mid deck. And then I can shift that there. It's not supposed to be a depth charge rack. I guess it is. They clearly want to implement subs at some point into the game. Right, now that's still giving us a fairly horrendous after weight offset because uh, torpedo launchers kind of heavy. Yeah, this is going to be hard to balance, isn't it? Right, there we go. Add even more torpedoes. That's the thing to do, apparently. Right, we're going to need some guns, and I think at most we can have a three inch gun on that emplacement. Um, do we want uh, nothing particularly heavy? Let's go with, yeah, four inch gun. Can we squeeze some in there? Oop. There and say Yeah that buggers up the after weight offset again quite a lot. <laughs> it's tricky. I mean I could literally just have it armed like this. Single four inch gun, single three inch gun. fit any more there unfortunately even though that funnel's not taking up a lot of space the uh, I, I don't know if this was I, I think it was uh, a relatively recently implemented thing but yeah the uh, the placement of the funnel really does affect the uh, the weight offset just on the basis of um, how about, should I, should I just go with three inch guns? And then we can maybe stick some extra three inch guns on the side there. Which I don't know how to shift those. There we go, I have to wait 2.6. Eight. Perfect. Right. We've really gone heavy on the torpedoes as opposed to the guns. The other, the other design already has uh, a few guns. Well, we have some space left to do some things. So uh, let's stick with turbines. Our engine efficiency is not that good. So induced. There we go. That's fine. Uh, semi, go with semi oil. Uh, we could actually have slightly better anti flooding measures. Uh, I don't think we're necessarily going to put 
uh, anything super duper amazing on this, like when we just put radio. Uh, yeah, should we just leave it? No armor. I mean, it's a destroyer after all. Its purpose is to go fast. We might even be able to make it go faster. Uh, to the pad, I'll just go with whatever gives the least detonation chance. Leave it there, TNT3. That's fine. Uh, yeah, let's see if we can get up to, say, 37 knots. 38 knots. 38.5. Okay, that's slightly too high, but... 38.4 knots. That's that that feels pretty whippy for a, a nineteen uh, twenty design destroyer. It's got a pretty uh, reasonable torpedo armament. The guns okay, not so much, but uh, yeah, I, I think I uh, I think I like that, and that should be a cheaper option than the other one. Uh, not by much, in fact. Only just barely, but. Honestly, I I think I would take the extra speed and the extra flexibility. So let's build maybe like 10 of those. See what that does to my finances. Okay, we're slightly in the negative, but we can eat that for a little bit. Uh, and then I think we'll have two of these battle cruisers and that'll definitely tank my finances a fair bit so we're going to have to actually put the tech budget back down to like 50% or whatever it was oh we can get away with uh, not quite as far the tech budget is an expensive one right so I think the distribution of ships is fine in terms of uh, coverage the last thing we want to do is uh, yeah, you've got either two possible roles, two possible states your ships can can be in. You can have them uh, basically be a fleet in being, or you can have them set to sea control, so they'll actually be actively out and patrolling the place. And uh, by default, I think when you build new stuff, it goes to in being. We can also select the ports that we want these uh, ships to go to. So. It's a little bit like there's there's not kind of a neat way. You just have to flick back and forth and see where you have port capacity. So Emden has still loads of port capacity. Uh, Keel's actually almost okay. So let's just dump. Uh, <laughs> we can always shuffle stuff around later. This this doesn't necessarily this isn't like where these things are going to live permanently. You can move ships from port to port. Let's have them all spawn in at End Emden, essentially. And I think we'll set... How many destroyers have we got set to uh, sea control already? It'd be nice if you could sort by class and by... Because I can't really see how many destroyers I have on sea control. Okay, if you sort... Okay, okay, it's subsorts. Uh, so... Let's set half those new ones to sea control then. And... What else is being built? Uh, I thought I'd set that for... Apparently I missed that. Everyone's got... Okay. Um... Yeah, right, so what was it? Uh, that's sea control. That is. Let's put the two new battle cruisers onto sea control. Or two new speedy boys. I kind of. I would prefer to have made the fleet myself, but uh, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to make this anything like a full series, by the way. I still would like to get back to doing uh, cyberpunk but after the 1.5 patch there was a 1.51 patch which I presume will have 
uh, you know, it would have been a bunch of bug fixes and stuff, but yeah, that then means the modders need to uh, account for that as well. And if there's any subsequent post 1.5 patches in the near future, that might delay things even further. So, yay! So I might get a couple of episodes out of out of this. I don't know if I'll do a full campaign, although it might be a very short campaign considering. Uh, but uh, yeah. Anyway, so we are. Uh, defending a convoy essentially and these are the ships we have available these are the ships they have available so only one destroyer they have a battle cruiser ours is mostly light cruisers and one battleship so we'll get to, I guess we'll get to see how they uh, perform I did make the mistake in my very first campaign of clicking the auto resolve button sometimes don't do that the results are uniformly terrible uh, it's like clicking auto resolve in a lot of the uh, the total war games where you just basically almost never want to do it the downside of that is sometimes the battles can take a while even with having the ability to speed things up so uh, okay we don't have any control over these guys let's just why is that a separate thing I don't know but uh, we even uh, now I've put them into uh, I didn't mean to do that I've not fully au fait with the controls yet no no we don't want that to be AI control right so that's fine they're going to just automatically retreat so we have our battle line we're worryingly close I don't know yet if these uh, I haven't seen any of these in action so I don't know which ones have torpedo tubes I don't know what their capabilities are once you have played a campaign a bit you get to see a bit more but uh, yeah anyway so um, one thing we're immediately going to do is uh, which line of Okay, they're not really in contiguous, sensible groups. So, can we just have. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit. <laughs> so, I want. Oh, let's put them all now into in, in individual groups. Excellent. It's kind of like messing around with staging in KSP sometimes. It can. Get a bit, uh, yeah. So I want the Emden to be in the same group as the Munchen, but it just tells me CL, so I don't know if I'm necessarily. No, it'd be nice if I could just like, like, drag select and say I want all these to be in a single group. Uh, but it doesn't do that. So, right, what group are you in? Uh, you can detach. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like this, this that's very much still rough edges. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would definitely appreciate if it was easier to group stuff up how I want it to be. Right, do I just... Hang on, is that so... Can I just, like... No, that's made a group of four. I don't want a group of four, those four. Okay, so what's the old one out there, then? Frown lob, frown lob. I don't, I don't. That's a name. That's certainly no. Why have you made them all separate groups? I just wanted that one ship to be in a group. Right. So if I <laughs> I've not. I swear I've not had this trouble before. But it usually puts them in slightly more intelligent groupings instead of like yeah th why it was one of four and, and one of two instead of being two groups of three I don't know but anyway maybe I'll just cut ahead until I figured this out because frankly it's probably not very fun to watch right that and that and Hamburg goes on that one Königsberg goes on that one. 
and the friend lob goes on that one. Right. So that's screening the battleship. How is that in the I don't know detach? Wait, how did oh for goodness sake. I want to detach those. Those three. Right. That's attached to the screen for the battleship. Okay. <laughs> okay, right, I'm good to start. <laughs> that was a bit finicky trying to get the right things in the right groups because uh, yeah well you saw how it was I managed to eventually get the three cruisers there in one group and the three cruisers there in one group although it hasn't put that one uh, as the can I like drag that ahead and say I want that to be the lead ship I don't think I can so that's going to lead to some slight weirdness, hopefully not too much weirdness. So the specific goal we have is prevent uh, up to 50% being sunk. Uh, if more than that is sunk, I think that's going to be like an auto loss for the, uh, the, the condition that we're in. So uh, yeah, let's just target the nearest thing because it also doesn't always auto target the things. Now you'll notice there's different target lines, you can set different targets for things like uh, your torpedoes and your... Uh, actually let's have the battleship concentrate on the, the battle cruiser. Uh, yeah you can uh, uh, you'll have like you know your secondaries torpedoes and main batteries all firing at different things. However one thing you can't do which would be nice is if you have targets on both sides of you, your secondaries will only fire at one target regardless. It's not like World of Warships where they can fire at multiple things simultaneously. I really hope these transports will know to dodge the torps because I have no control over them whatsoever. Uh, one of the new things I think for 104 was this little button here where they will uh, uh, ships will automatically attempt to evade um, incoming torpedoes with varying levels of success. And also, I guess at least some of these things do have torpedoes. Right, so uh, that is... We have to be careful this doesn't take too many hits. It doesn't have a particularly amazing main belt. I think the 13.5 was, what, the conning tower? We've also got torps coming in on them as well, so that should uh, disrupt their formation somewhat. I imagine we're going to lose... Uh, at least some of these, yeah, we've got transport that's going down already. Just because we've spawned so close to each other, this might actually be a tricky one to uh, to actually walk away with. Transports are worth quite a lot of victory points as well. And they also, um, they're, they're quite expensive. Like the one of the three sliders you saw there uh, basically is your sort of um, civil shipbuilding budget, your transport, your, your merchant marine budget. And you have to allocate uh, a certain amount that will replenish up to I think, like 1 or 2% per turn, something like that. So uh, if you lose lots of transports, it can take a while to build them back up again. In this case, we're going to lose at most 5, which is not ideal, but uh, yeah. Right, let's put this on times two. I don't want to put it really any faster than that because when there's torpedoes flying around the place you kind of want to have uh, as much reaction time as possible. Uh, we can also have a look-see at uh, nine-inch guns. They do have torpedo tubes. It looks like they only have 
basically one shot of uh, like one torpedo per tube. Oh, I managed to score a hit on that white cruiser there. Uh, you can hit things when you're aiming at other things, it is possible. Right, so we want, want our destroyer to... Uh, it looks like... Even though it was showing up as invalid, uh, that triple tube is still functional. So I guess we don't really have to worry about that too much. I'm not sure why it's got these side-mounted single tubes. That that's the uh, the auto designer does come up with some odd idiosyncrasies sometimes. Ooh, that's a nasty spread of incoming torps. So we've got some maneuvering going on there to try and uh, dodge those. It is possible, and I think I've, I've observed this in uh, certainly in previous uh, videos, it's entirely possible to do uh, uh, friendly fire with torpedoes as it were. Right, you should be dodging uh, destroyer. I might have to take manual control of you. Let's see if I can get you to dodge. Ooh. Uh, I think this destroyer is going to just get sunk by these torpedoes. Um, one of my my frustrations with this still is, especially when you've got a bunch of ships close together, uh, the pathfinding can sometimes really struggle. Uh, we might just have that try and retreat. In fact, we can have them smoke as well, but I suspect they're just going to flood out. If they can beat the flooding, some of those red compartments if the compartment's red and it floods, then it cannot be pumped out at that stage. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that might still have enough un, uh, uh, like undamaged compartments that can be taken, uh, that could be pumped out to uh, make a getaway. Because unlike uh, scenarios when You've, you've got ships that are just inherently, you know, potentially disposable in, in any kind of effective sense. Um, yeah, you know, you have to worry about your budget and you have to worry about your build times and all the rest of it. So they're putting out torpedoes. Battleship's fine so far. Let me switch fire to the closer target. I will be interested to see how this one goes because I think 1920s is when the the tech is starting to get a bit more interesting and uh, the uh, the battles will start to get a bit long ranged because uh, certainly the 1890s and the 1900s campaign everything is kind of a knife fight range because the accuracy is generally so bad this is starting to feel like uh, a proper era of naval battles now whoa hello That's some of the transport down Ah, uh, we're going to take at least one of those. Ooh, that's a nasty hit. Right, now, as that has taken a bunch of damage, some other ship is now effectively going to be the lead ship of that group. But, yeah, that then means it's not necessarily possible to, uh, like, take control of the ship that you want to take control of and get it out of action. Uh, I suspect we might lose this one. That was a really heavy hit. That will do the same, we'll detach that one and see if we can tell it to uh, just head away from the enemy if possible, but I doubt it's going to live long enough. I'm trying to be fairly aggressive with my, with my light cruisers here just to uh, pull them off the... Uh, pull their attention away from the transports if possible. Man, it was really unlucky we started this close to the enemy fleet with uh, with our transports. But, uh, yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. Sometimes it's the opposite. And uh, you get to start really, really close to uh, an enemy bunch of transports. We do, in theory, have the better fleet to start with, but I think I'd be even better off if I'd actually designed all of it myself. 
Right, so that's unfortunate. We just lost a another cruiser. It wasn't even the one that previously got hit. So I'm not sure what that got smacked by or if it was torpedoes. Um, I, it's for these. Um, this is a fairly intense engagement. You know, it's, it's kind of it can get tricky trying to uh, keep a track of everything. Uh, let's put the torpedoes on safe time. In fact, let's stick. We're probably not going to hit anything with the torpedoes at the, the ranges we're going for. Let's have them uh, concentrate on other things. Uh, that destroys actually out of torps already, so it's less of a threat. So maybe we switch to this uh, heavy cruiser here, which is certainly the more valuable target. Battleship's taken some minor damage, not too fussed about that. Uh, I have to watch out for whatever this is, though. That's another destroyer. I want to manoeuvre a bit here so we're not going in completely straight lines. Yeah, I would not like to be doing this at any more than times two speed. <laughs> and you can see why it can be uh, a little tedious doing everything manually. You don't have to necessarily take every single engagement the game offers. It is possible to... Uh, actually um, just ignore missions that come up. Some of them you have to complete, uh, others you don't necessarily have to. Right, so could be a hint of that, that cruiser there. Uh, but we actually just ate a torpedo. Did, oh no, but they ate another torpedo. That wasn't us. I think. Yeah, that was one of the side uh, side launchers. I mean, if we can walk away from this having, I mean, the ideal thing would be to take out their battle cruiser and their heavy cruisers, and you know, if we can get some more of their their sort of lower value targets, that would be nice as well. Their BCs firing at our BB. Angle them, actually, let's angle them more that way. Yeah, trying to keep track of what all the various different groups are doing can be uh, a little interesting. <laughs> the, the smaller engagements where you can more concentrate on individual things are, I think, the more fun ones. I don't think I've done any great big grand battles. There's not been any Battle of Jutlands yet in any of the campaigns I've done. But I don't think you have the, the like. There doesn't seem to be any way to force that as an option. Right, they're on cooldown with their smoke. Um, I might want to we'll set their torpedoes off for now, just in case. I don't want to get any uh, quote unquote friendly torpedo hits. Uh, maybe angle them away. I that's, that's an unpleasantly close broadside of uh, nine inch guns. This cruiser hopefully will get taken down very soon. They're not looking great. Blasted right in the side. I think we're going to get those three transports away and. Uh, the destroyer is withdrawing. Uh, we also have this. Uh, we'll just have that smoke up. Yeah, the Emden's trying to withdraw, but they've they've lost almost all engine power. So uh, they're going to be struggling a bit. Is that they've got no torpedoes left? There's something over there, like a destroyer or a light cruiser. Focus on the nearer target. If you have torpedoes that you could put out against that guy, that would be nice. I'm going to put them on safe. Actually, I'm going to put them off. Um, just concentrate everything on that. And that looks like it's going okay. I really like that heavy cruiser to go down. 
37%. Sometimes it can take <laughs> quite a while to actually fully put a ship down. Uh, the last campaign, the 1910 campaign I did, the uh, the light cruisers, the, the British light cruisers that I was facing off against, it was um, uh, quite funny in that they were probably among the easiest opponents I'd ever faced in that whatever combination of um, uh, terrible armor and ammunition and uh, you know weight of ammunition uh, propellant all that kind of thing whatever they would chosen to use was resulting in just consistent multiple flash fires and it was it was this style of light cruiser so you would just have like a dozen flash fires you just have the turrets popping off one by one with the blue jets of of flame coming as uh, off as, as the am ammunition cooked off which uh, was usually very bad for the structural integrity of the ship as you might uh, presume oh black like that yeah i was i was uh, saying these are not particularly well armored battleships well damn uh, yeah, that just went from uh, 100, well not quite 100%, but it was like 90, 85%. It was in pretty good nick and then BAM, it's dead. That is a major blow. That is, uh, that's pretty bad. That's our major firepower out of action. And you know, that's an expensive unit to have lost. Oh dear. And that was, uh, what even was that? Can we see from the on on the uh, the damage log? Uh, it was their main seven-inch gun, yeah. And it just uh, yeah, it just penned the barbette, set off the ammo, and that was that. I would not have designed my battleships like this. I really wouldn't have. The main armament's fine, but um, yeah. The, the the game has designed them with uh, a bit too much in the way of firepower and a bit too little in the way of uh, protection for my liking. I think we're just going to try and have to withdraw once we've bought our um, our transports enough time but I suspect whatever happens this is going to count as a loss in terms of victory points just because they've sunk several transports and they've managed to, st uh, to sink my battleship I might have to design more battleships after this as well, or, or a new battleship. Oh, this is just barely hanging on, this heavy cruiser. I would really like that to just to just sink already. Right, Königsberg's not looking so hot. Uh, that looks like a perma-flooded engine space. Yeah, hits around the mid tend to consistently take out your engines so if you can get hit by a torpedo in the fore of the the ship that's probably about the best place in terms of not doing any uh, um, horrific you know damage that's going to slow down in terms of mobility if you take one in the aft it's potentially going to damage your propeller shafts so obviously well, that's not particularly welcome well, that took a torpedo, but if that was in an already damaged section, it won't have done uh, that much of effective extra damage. I've done some uh, structural damage, but uh, yeah. I just need a hit in one of these uh, remaining unflooded compartments, essentially. Otherwise, it could potentially stay afloat for a fair while, even at 35% structural... Uh, Integrity. If you've got any torpedoes left, that would be uh, useful. Man, this is really not going well. And I think it's no coincidence that this is the first campaign I've played where I haven't designed all of my own ships from the ground up. And I meant to! I just uh, I didn't realise I was clicking that button. Oh man, that's such an expensive loss. And in terms of like that's that's the entire crew gone 
I, d I don't know if there's any such thing as crew being rescued or recovered or anything like that uh, in this game. I think if, if the ship goes down, that's it. It goes down with the entirety of its crew and that's that. They're all just lost. That's, uh, God, that's painful. That's so painful. Well, we have fewer torpedoes to worry about at this stage, so... Yeah, effectively two groups of light cruisers. Four light cruisers is all I've got left. Um, how many torpedoes have these guys got left? A fair amount! It's actually got deck launchers. Where are they? Okay. I don't know if it was a if it was ever a huge issue apart from um, it, it seemed to particularly affect Japanese ships, but I guess they uh, were carrying around bigger torpedoes generally. In terms of effectively, you know, you get hit in uh, uh, you know set off what what is effectively just like a large bomb sitting on your deck. Then that tends to not be very uh, healthy for your uh, cruiser or destroyer but they don't seem to really go off in the same way in this game anyway, that's a thing they will later right we've at least taken out a heavy cruiser but um, do I just set everyone to retreat and hope that the end battle button pops up I think so I think that's the best I'm gonna manage I could try a suicidal charge against this uh, this guy but yeah. Torpedoes will slow it down at best, and even then it's a... Well, there we go. It's a fairly fast manoeuvrable ship. They're firing at the further away cruiser, that's fine. I have no issue with that. We'll see how this affects my bottom line after, after this match is finished. I think I think I'll I'll fast forward a bit here because it is just basically now me trying to withdraw. I don't think anything else dramatic is going to happen at this stage. We probably will lose the Emden. Uh, just because it's it's not going anywhere. That's like the the, the crew cannot repair the engine damage because those compartments are all flooded, so yeah, that's just kind of screwed. Right, technically we'll have saved you know, the 50% of my own transports, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go, we lost the Emden and that has allowed us to end the battle, so, oh, this is gonna hurt. Uh, oh god, look at that, yeah, uh, so we did inflict some damage, but they had third as many points. Um, we technically saved the over 50% of transports, but oh, that was uh, two light cruisers lost, and the the big hit was the battleship. That that was a huge chunk. That was over half of the the 3,000 crew lost. That was painful. That was very painful. So uh, that already puts us on a, a back foot right out of the gate, and we haven't even done any of the other things we can do this turn but I think I will wrap up this video there and uh, yeah I will come back to uh, come back to this we'll do some more turns later um, yeah I, like I said I don't know if I'll make this a full full series but certainly a couple of episodes just to show the current state of the game and uh, what the campaign can be like so that is it for UA Dreadnoughts. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.